Yeah, excellent. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I don't know why Kara doesn't like phone in the intro music, but I don't think she does, you know. But I, you know, for some, I probably just because it's old. It's just because I was a trombone player growing up. So I, it has, the instrument has a special place in my heart. I'm so sorry, but uh, it's just the way it goes. But hey, everybody. Welcome to, uh, what day is this? Wow, it's Thursday. Welcome to TLD Cast, Training, Learning, and Development Cast. We are the TLDC, the Training, Learning, and Development Community Conference Cast and Chat. Don't forget to hit us up on the website. Become a member. If you've been hanging out a few times and you're starting to get some excellent value out of uh, the work that we do here at TLDC, hit that member button and join. It really does help out uh, with uh, us keeping this thing alive and and, uh, and keeping the infrastructure up and running. And um, it also tells us that you really like what we're doing and, um, and want us to continue. So uh, thank you to everybody who has joined and become a member so far and, and uh, supported the work that we're doing here at TLDC. Click that invite button also and tell all your friends and neighbors and relatives about how fun it is to hang out for an hour and do some professional development with some really fun folks. We have different conversations every single day. We sometimes go off the rails, but we try our best to stay on the rails. Uh, and we try our best to even define the rails. And sometimes that doesn't even happen. But, you know, it's like a it's a mixed bag. It's a box of chocolates. You just never know how awesome it's going to be from day to day. So uh, one thing that makes it more fantastic than other days is when we have great guests. Like today, we have the wonderful and amazing Andrew Hughes. Good morning, Andrew. Hey, what's up, everybody? Friend, thanks for the uh, intro, man. Yeah, you know what? Thanks for hanging out with us uh, again today. I always love chatting with you, and you're so busy. It's hard to get on your calendar. So it's like, well, I'm just going to book him for TLD Cast, and then I'll get to chat with him. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a, a little nuts, but that's okay. Uh, busy is good. Yeah. I, I'm the person, if I'm not busy, I get myself in trouble. So. <laughs> yeah, let's keep you out of trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, your, uh, your your wife will send us a check. Oh, you know it. You know it. <laughs> Brent, she was please. already like, who do we send the expense account to for the Phoenix product, uh, Phoenix conference? I was like, yeah, you're not sending anything for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, good times, though. Good times for sure. Hey, everybody, thanks for joining us today. If you've got questions, you can drop those questions into the chat. And if you've got uh, an official question, you can either use the ask a question feature underneath the video or our uh, wonderful volunteer group uh, will grab that out of the chat and put it in there. But uh, I think maybe in order for you guys to generate some questions, you probably, some of you, maybe have no idea who this guy is. So, Andrew, give us a little intro. Who the heck are you? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Andrew Hughes. That was easy. Um, I wear quite a few hats. Um, I am the president of Designing Digitally. Uh, we are um, an e-learning series game, training simulation, and mobile learning company. We build custom content for Fortune 1000 companies. And then um, I'm also a professor at the University of Cincinnati, um, where I teach in the business department. And I'm part of the business law tech department. I teach um, digital technologies in business. Um, I teach uh, sales. I teach uh, principles of advertising, marketing, um, I used to teach interactive media um, before I uh, obtained my MBA, and then uh, they moved me to the business department. So I get a lot of like um, digital technology and business, or maybe some interactive media or CIS programmers that want to learn more about how business works. Um, so I actually get a lot of those classes, um, which I don't talk a lot about when we're all together because it's mostly about learning and development in the corporate space, which is what designing digitally does. And then on top of that, um, I have a handful of things like for personal, I have two kids, as you, uh, Brent knows, um, and I play men's flags football with uh, competitive football players. And this is cool. So everybody knows last night, two of the Jets practice team players were playing with us last night, which was really, really cool. Um, so we actually um, were playing 
uh, flag football with some of the Jets pra uh, practice players last night, which was really cool. Um, and then on top of that, my wife and I own a property company and we have apartment complexes throughout um, Dayton and Cincinnati that we uh, manage. Um, but where I come from is um, I come from a very, very, very tiny town um, that actually Craig uh, cybered. And it's called Bondsville, Ohio. Um, and Brett, how do I share my screen here, man? I oh, you, to you have to install the little screen share widget. Oh, give me a second. Yeah, Let me it, only, it does only take just a second. But while you're doing that, I'll drop in the link that uh, Craig just shared. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Wikipedia. Yeah, do that. Show that to everybody if you could. Share it. So if you guys will. Yeah, so if you see this picture on the on the right, if you click on that picture, okay. I just want to point out to everyone, the entire village is in that one picture. So <laughs> Craig's family lives there. My family lives there. That's the whole town. The school is there. There used to be a carryout. There used to be a bar. There used to be a grocery. I don't even um, think you guys have a stoplight going through there, do you? Uh, we do not have a stoplight, my man. There's a stop sign. We got a stop sign. Wow. Well, so you know, we, like to, say, we like to keep things low tech around here, so it's good. Yeah, I'm just saying. So for all of you that are like, oh, well, I'm from a small town, and now I do this, I don't really think you know the definition of small town unless you can literally live within a square mile. Um. <laughs> I love I, I love the stat of largest per capita IDs of any town. <laughs> yeah, you know what? He's probably right. He probably nailed it. We should literally start the uh, instructional designers for Ohio. <laughs> Von, the, the Vaughnsville ID chapter of uh, TLDC, we'll call it. <laughs> right, right. I think that would actually be a great idea because, uh, you know, Craig's come from there. I actually know quite a few people. There's another uh, friend of mine that's uh, from the other town on the other side of the the, the fields. And um, he actually... Um, <laughs> He actually uh, is pretty successful in the learning and uh, the L&D space, but he's in the K through 12 realm. Oh. So uh, Ohio is known for educators. Um, that's what we crank out. Hey, I installed the app, but let's see what happens because it wanted me to reload. And oh, yeah, you might have to refresh your browser and you can do that. It's okay. You won't go away. You'll pop right back in. All right. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. At least I think he will. <laughs> hey, it's not dead air. I'm still here. Woo! I'm back. Yeah, there he is. Okay, I'm going to unshare my video. There we go. Now it's all you, man. All right. Okay. Woohoo! So, um, Actually, guys, what I was thinking about is I kind of like to talk a little bit um, about uh, a handful of different topics that I see, um, and we can kind of open this up to the floor. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is some of the cool R&D work that we're doing at Designing Digitally. Um, and what I mean by that is we still, our primary focus is like gamified e-learning and serious game development. So I'll be showing you uh, kind of some cool stuff that's coming out of our studio. And then also um, we can have some of that conversation over, uh, you know, business and what it was like to be a freelancer because Designing Digitally started with me as a freelance e-learning developer um, in Flash, um, in HTML, um, and then grew to uh, the company that we are today. Um, and that has been a, a huge uh, thing because as you just saw the small town I came from, um, it's not like we're, you, those are not fancy houses in that small town, anybody. So it's not, uh, you know, I don't have a big venture capital sitting around and a bunch of money laying around. So we've had to build this bootstrap basically. So we can have yeah, some. You, and you've been in you've been in the industry for a long time. I mean, I think that's the real key here is for everybody to know. It's like you you come with some serious clout to this business. You've 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 seen the changes. You've built the products. You've worked with customers. You understand the business side that the the clients you work with, uh, you know, that they're dealing with. You've solved the problems from that that um, that sort of initial, you know 
instructional design, you know, learning and development, that e-learning development platform. And now you, with designing digitally, you've really significantly leveled up to doing those, that advanced interactive training that we know is so much more uh, impactful and effective than just clicking that next button. You know, what's funny is that actually is the reason why I started designing digitally. So I was working for right out of college. Um, I was hired by uh, an e-learning company and I was developing e-learning mostly for like um, Procter & Gamble and Albertsons. And then I moved to Cincinnati and was working for an e-learning company building for GE turbine engine plant here in Cincinnati. And um, at the same time, I was teaching interactive media at the art institutes um, at night. So I'd, I've always had like two jobs because I'm insane and <laughs> that's just how you roll um and so uh what ended up happening is i was basically making glorified powerpoints online and it drove me nuts and i said there's got to be a better way so uh with that said the company tried to put me the company i was working for tried to put me under non-compete and the reason why is ge was actually interested in the possibility of bringing me on for them and and um so it scared the company they tried to put me on a non-compete and i said no way not doing that and um so i walked away and started designing digitally and that was in 2006 we went incorporated um, and that's that's kind of how it started. Now, what we do is uh, a lot of high-end learning development work, um, like Brent was talking about. Uh, we will have clients that have like a serious business problem, and then we will relate it back to the business. And what I mean by that is, um, instead of just building something um, that we feel might be, meet the learning objectives, we'll take it a step farther and say, okay, we met these learning objectives, so how are we gonna see the business impact? So are we gonna do a control group with you to see how well this is done compared to the outside of the control group? And we take it farther than just, hey, here's your module, see ya. Yeah. And so it, it, it takes a lot more time. It's more of an investment, but they actually see the business impact. And then there's nobody in the executive realm that can turn around and say, well, we shouldn't do that again. Because yeah. we're sorry, we just proved that this is effective. Yeah, and it yeah, it works great. Let's let's take a look at one of these things you've got. You've you've been working on some really interesting stuff. I you were uh, you were kind enough to give me a little uh, a little preview last week and uh, and show me a few things because of some work I had coming up. And man, always blows me away the cool stuff you guys are working on. Yeah, we got some pretty neat stuff. Um, so this is one that we were just allowed to release, and I'm sorry that the video is kind of choppy. Um, but what this is is a um, browser based um, immersive um, virtual environment for HP that actually uh, is basically a mix between Honey, I Shrunk the Kids and um, you working inside of the servers. So you're actually an avatar working inside of the servers. And right now all those people with haps is, are actually data. And your job is to figure out why the firewall will not let that data inside of there. And so what you're doing is conceptually learning how to troubleshoot blade servers um oh. through um hps um you know instead of being so literal because they we already made a repository of all these videos where you literally pull out the mezzanine cards and you do this um but uh believe it or not what ends up happening is uh they get the literal part but they wanted something a little more fun and engaging so we actually developed out all of the uh, c7000 c9000 um training for hp in this game-based virtual environment system that they can actually play with each other um there are quests um and they can actually interact and play these quests together or just by themselves uh to learn how to um utilize uh, hp blade servers and uh, work with them a little bit better Oh, uh, that is so cool. I did not see that one coming. <laughs> and I'm not I'm not being pompous. There's just so many cool ones. Okay, so yeah, here's another yeah, one. You guys, yeah, you guys, like I said, I mean, always some great stuff. You've got such skilled developers that you're you're They're very you know, talented. Man. They're very talented. So here's one that we're finishing up right now, and this is the first take of the actual um, the um, case study video. Um, but we had a client that works in construction. This is a construction company. And what they wanted to do, and I'll repeat this so everybody sees it, um, 
is this is an augmented reality uh, game that they can actually play over either over their phone or on the webcam together. Um, they already have classroom experiences. And what ends up happening is this is a resource allocation. You have two projects going on and you have to determine on who and what resources to use where to ensure that you can get the projects done with inside a budget and on time. And rather than it just being a computer game, these guys do a classroom training. So we actually developed it out as an augmented reality piece that they could play, show over the phone. Uh -huh. Cards. So, um, so. Okay, so yeah, let's so hold on right there. You're <laughs> you go so fast, and I'm gonna stop you right there because that stuff is too cool for us to just just run on by and just say, yeah, that's cool. So what we were looking at there literally was cards on a table, but they were yep. viewing the cards through their the phone. camera or and, their webcam. And, it, and it's the augmented reality that puts those 3D characters on top of the cards. Correct? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. So then, think about doing like Dungeon and Dragons, like the D&D. &D. Think about yeah. doing D&D, &D, but um, using, you know, having your phone over it and um, actually being able to see what happens after you roll your die. Um, so what we wanted to do is actually allow them to have a card game because this was a classroom setting, have a card game that they could actually interact with the card game, um, but but utilize technology at the same time and show, you know, take it to a different level of immersion. For them to learn how to do resource allocation while building two construction projects with the same staff and the same resources. And in what stage and how do you use it and where do you use it? So you're just seeing a preview of some of it. Oh, that is just so cool, <laughs> man. I love it. I love it. That's some of the fun, cool stuff. Um, another one um, that um, you and I have spoken about is we actually uh, put this out for free. Uh, we were working with a uh, gas and energy company, Dominion, uh, to develop out uh, training. And this training was uh, safety for electrical line workers. And the safety for electrical line workers, what we ended up doing is developing out a VR project using the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift. Um, and we um, had training inside of this, but here's what you should know. What we ended up doing is building the training for you to learn while you're doing the VR um, on how to cut the trees down, where to where to cut them, um, so that they didn't hurt or uh, damage any residential property or any electrical lines or hurt yourself. But then after we finished the project with Dominion, they actually said, hey, um, because we asked, we're like, could we possibly just take out the part where you freely cut the trees and put that out on Steam just to show people you can use VR for learning. And the reason why is I'm a big component about show your work. That's why I'm showing you guys these examples. But I have all these people I see that are presenting on this stuff, but I don't see any of their case studies. So yeah. my biggest thing is like, I would love to see a rule that says you must have your own case study before you can present on that material. And um, that I think is something very important. So what we did is we're, we're you know, uh, show us with your work, not with your words. So for us, um, this is one of the examples. You actually play this free on Steam. Um, and basically all you can do, you don't learn, you don't get the learning aspect part because that's Dominion's uh, content. But you do get the ability to freely cut the trees down to see what happens as <laughs> And I and will say it is, quite, it is quite fun to be able to just freely cut trees down at random however you want. It <laughs> It, it's it's fun and and understand that you know um, it got, it has what I think is funny is it's mixed reviews on Steam but again all we did is put out for free it costs nothing just to show look yeah. this Google. just the possibility uh, yeah I mean I, yeah. I it's, yeah it's fantastic I I think I think people get a little bit too intense and in their in their reviews of anything online really <laughs> you know they, they, when they don't understand the real context of um, you know, of what's up there and whatnot. But, you know, it's funny, as you were, as you were talking about this again, I, I'm reminded of Yaroon and his current job. Um, he deals with line workers, I believe. Um, the company he's at trains, uh, you know, the electrical workers that climb the poles, maybe not the guys yeah, that cut yeah. the trees, but yeah, that's, um, that's, that's where he works. And uh, I thought, huh, I wonder, I can't remember if I told him about um, the chop and drop, uh, you know, simulation or not, but we definitely have to share this with him. I don't think he's in the chat today, but. Tell him, um, tell him it's free on Steam. Go try it out. And that's yeah, oh, Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think he'd be really interested in seeing that. All right, cool. What's up next?
All right, man, check this one out. Again, I'm showing you Flashy, and I'm going to pull back after we get in with Flashy because what you guys are seeing is all the R&D projects. The, I would say probably 80% of our work is gamified e-learning and, uh, like, uh, serious games, custom-based around um, scenario-based serious games that are going into learning management systems. So the <laughs> stuff I'm showing you now is, like, the cool Flashy stuff that we do, um, but there's still the entire production of what you would consider um, a step above traditional e-learning, but the mm -hmm. stuff I'm showing you here is the fun stuff. Like five so or ten steps that. above traditional e-learning. <laughs> yeah, well... We like to do fun stuff, okay? Fun <laughs> must be a metric with what with us. Okay, so this one, you guys, um, this was from National. This was a grant through the National Institute of Health, and we partner with Barron Associates, which is a research agency. Um, this is a two uh, two funded um, by the uh, NIH. The first was one hundred fifty thousand to build a prototype, and then the second was a million to actually build the product. And uh, we won both phases with Barron Associates as our partner. And what we did is we actually built this game based experience for people that have had strokes, um, hurt their arms, um, or any type of thing where they have to do occupational therapy or physical therapy. What you're looking at is we took the Microsoft Connect 1 and the Microsoft Connect 2 and developed out um, these simulated games. And you're probably wondering why would be making breakfast be a game? I'll explain that in a minute. Oh, but, I can um, tell you that. My, my wife's an occupational therapist. She does home health care, so I know all of this. <laughs> this is this. Then you're going to love this, man, because this I is what do. we did. I'm looking at this going, oh, my gosh, I have to show this to Linda. She's going to just freak out. <laughs> I know she would like it, and I can share you the uh, material, and you guys can actually, she can actually buy it for her, her um, occupational therapy um, division or her room. And I'll, yeah. I'll explain that. So basically what you guys are looking at down here in the bottom corner um, right here is actually one of our employees, Greg. And what is happening is that's the Microsoft Connect output of what you see, um, what the Connect sees. And what's happening is Greg's only moving his arm because if he had a stroke, he needs to learn how to reuse his arm without any weights or anything of that nature to get the six axes of motion back into your arms. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're doing is the first uh, kind of experience. And here's what we did when we were doing the focus groups with the research agency, which is Baron Associates. We found that a lot of these um, people that have had issues um, with their mobility of their arms want to be able to do the things they used to be able to do, like make themselves breakfast, put away their groceries. And then we built really cool games like um, Hot Air Balloon, so you like move your arms like this to move the hot air balloon through obstacle courses and cool stuff like that. So we've done all of those, but this gives you kind of an idea of what we did for them. And then um, the way that this works is um, since this was an NIH grant, this actually got to be built as a product and then it's now sold to the hospitals to be used as an occupational therapy tool um, inside mm -hmm. of the hospitals. Now, here's the cool part. I like, like I said, I love to put my money where my mouth is and I love to show examples because anybody can talk about doing a project. Here is that project in action in the hospital with a patient. So we built these carts, the Connect 2, the, the small computer running the system, and here he is practicing it. So this just gives you guys kind of an idea of some of the cool R&D work that's coming out of our studio. Um, they, they, they love doing this stuff, but it's not all the, the work that we do. But I did want to show you guys this because this is, this is literally seeing a project in action uh, being used at a hospital um, and being used by an actual real patient. Yeah, um, this is fantastic. It, but before we move on to the other stuff, let, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the tech behind this. Because I know, and, and some yeah. people may not appreciate and or want to go down this road, but let's just take a few minutes and just kind of geek out with us a little bit. So what are we talking about as far as um, the, the software that you guys use to create this kind of stuff? Yeah, sure. Okay, so um, for... If I if I'm talking about Voda, um, this was built with C plus or C sharp, um, JavaScript, PHP. Um, it's got MySQL databases that it connects to that are online, so we can save all the data of the six axes of motion for the because we got to be able to provide a result of their movement and their improvement of movement, not just oh, yeah. hey go play this again. That's the step above that I'm talking about, rather than just hey 
cool, we built this for you. Go try it out. Let's see if it does something. Um, so we actually have to track the degrees of axis of motion and prove and show that um, through the ERPs um, or the uh, health reports of how um, how this actually has improved uh, their abilities. Um, for this, for the technology, uh, C Sharp, uh, MySQL databases, um, JavaScript, um, then uh, also Unity 3D, the gaming engine, mm -hmm. um, then the Microsoft Connect um, SDK, uh, the Microsoft Connect uh, collaborator, and then the programming of the Connect to be the interactive controller inside of Unity. So that's how that one worked. Um, the same one when you were looking at um, the the AR build, um, we actually developed that um, utilizing um, C Sharp, JavaScript, um, and then build an APK, um, which is a um, or and an iOS file out of it. Um, the animation what, what's, was done what's in an Maya. APK? Um, an Android output, the extension for an Android. Oh, that's remember. for the mobile one. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. The mobile side, we just exported them out as iOS and Androids, and we're we're doing the 3D animation, and then it's got it's actually um, the the augmented system. Um, it runs on top of all of that. That actually then uh, provides the data overlay for you to see, um, and that's all written in C Sharp and JavaScript. Um, uh, that's how the guys built the that one. Yeah, that's so cool. So you know. Um, you know what might be interesting? I'm 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 running up on my 30 minute uh, break that I need to take, but yes. um, I'm I'm curious. Like like this is really high end stuff, and not every instructional designer or um, you know training developer is gonna want to run down this road. But if somebody yes. were to say, "Wow, this is the kind of thing I really want to get into." You know, because you're working with these guys all the time that have these skills, do you have any recommendations at all as to what, like, what do you think people should learn next? Should they learn C Sharp? Should they learn Unity? Should they, you know, start going down this path at all? I think JavaScript. And the yeah. reason why is, here's what I think is really cool about the industry. Um, uh JavaScript, okay, so back when I was working at these other e-learning companies before Flash really like took off as the e-learning medium, um, we were building this um, as HTML files and with JavaScript. And so when I was first hired, I was literally building HTML, like page one.html, page two.html, and then adding like JavaScript questions and drag and drops using JavaScript. Then what happened is Flash came in and we all jumped on Flash and we started building all of our interactive media than Flash. Now all of a sudden we said no more Flash, HTML5. We went straight back to JavaScript. So <laughs> yeah. literally we are back to where we were. It's just that HTML has evolved to allow us to do more interaction. So like yeah. I'll, I'll explain one. You guys, everybody is like excited about the DAP framework because everybody heard about the ADAPT framework. Oh, where yeah. You can choices okay so like I have an example of that that I can show in a minute but I can tell you this right now all it is is JavaScript in HTML that's all adapt is so you literally could build that if you just grow grab snippets from it's a web page it's building a web page for you it's wow. not it's not as lucrative as we might think it is wow amazing well hey, yeah. listen, when we come back I'm gonna take a quick break when we come back uh, we're gonna we're gonna show some more examples uh, and uh, some stuff that others you know might even be able to do or to learn from or or to see. But while I'm taking this break, you can jump into the chat, and say hi to some folks. You can even check out the question that's in there if you need to prep for that. Um, and uh, I'll be back to you in just like two minutes. Yeah, sounds good. All right, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna close your window share because I'm gonna throw up my own real quick Let's here. Go for it. I'm going to load some stuff up anyways. All right, cool. But anyways, hey, while I'm doing this, everybody knows that uh, my favorite part about the halftime show here is just saying thank you to everybody for being a part of the community. And um, those folks who step up and volunteer and help us um, go that extra mile as well to be a part of TLDC. We really, really appreciate that. Craig, Kara, um, all, all of you who jump in on a regular basis, um, Mike and um, Deborah drops in a lot and uh, Claudine and just everybody um, that uh, that hangs out with us and, and supports us. Mark, you're uh, you're in here so much and uh, and such a great contributor. Josh as well. It's good to see you again, Josh. I haven't seen you in a while. Trish, 
is here as well. Just thanks so much, everybody. You guys are fantastic. Uh, again, you know, TLDC, the, the biggest C word in what we do is community. And we wouldn't be doing this if, um, if you guys weren't engaged and, uh, and weren't getting some value from it. So uh, thank you all so much for everything that you do and being a part of this great, uh, great community and as it grows. So we really appreciate all of that. And, um, and all the support that you give us in, in so many different ways. Uh, don't forget about all of our sponsors, especially today with our fantastic guest, Andrew Hughes and his company, Designing Digitally. I just had his website up here. They do such fantastic work, like you are all uh, being able to see. So um, if you, you, you probably already knew if you came to TLDC 18, you probably met Andrew and and knew that uh, he was doing some great work in uh, in his presentation and everything, but maybe you just really didn't know to the level at which they took this kind of stuff. So um, you're getting a lot of that here today, and just know that um, they are easy to get a hold of, and that you guys should hit up his website. And um, if you want a deeper demo specifically for um, you know a project that you're working on, something that you want to do, maybe you want to figure out a way to amp up the maybe, you know, the, the click next learning that you're currently doing. Uh, you don't have the skills in house and you, you want to take a step outside and grab uh, an agency like designing digitally to get that, take your learning to the next level, then uh, you should definitely hit them up and, uh, and just see, right. It's worth, uh, it's worth having a conversation to see how you can get that done. Um, the, the creativity of their solution designers is top notch. So, um, you know, you guys can at, uh, at least go through that process with them, which is which is fantastic. So I would highly encourage you to do that. You know what I also wanted to do in this break, too, is just tell everybody um, about maybe what you missed and what's coming up uh, in the future. We started this XAPI playlist and the idea of doing a playlist Man, we went for four hours on Monday and talked just about XAPI stuff, and it went really, really well. I mean, if you want to get a very focused, um, you know, good look at what XAPI can do, um, that's a great recording that you can go back to each of those sessions and that event as a whole and uh, and take a listen there. We also chatted with Janet Clary. You can go back and watch that recording. And um, I wasn't here yesterday. So for those of you that get bored by listening to me, you probably had a great time yesterday with uh, our stand-in host, uh, Toddy Norum, as they talked about the aging workforce. And then, of course, we have today's guest, Mr. Andrew Hughes. And tomorrow, Lee Lefevre from Common Craft is going to be on Video Friday. So that's going to be tons of fun as well. And then also uh, next, well, further out, next, 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 next Friday, I'm going to be live from Mindspace again, which is going to be a lot of fun as well. So um, we're doing a lot of great stuff around here at TLDC. Share it with your friends. Let them know. Click that invite button and uh, join the Slack channel to continue these conversations. There are um, a lot of really active conversations going on right now. People talking about their projects that they're working on. They're looking for suggestions and some ideas. And um, and you can do the same. And you can also be helpful to your peers. That's what we're all about. So sharing your knowledge, sharing what you know, and, uh, and jumping in and making that happen. So uh, with that, I will again say thank you all for being a part of what we're doing here at TLDC. And we'll jump right back in to uh, Andrew and designing digitally and some great case studies, the real thing. Oh, you're muted. I'll unmute you. Oops. Ah, there we go. Do it? There we go. <laughs> What's up, guys? Now we're back. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um. You know, I, I showed some really cool R&D stuff. I'm going to show just uh, one or two more cool R&D things. Um, oh, and cool. then what we'll do is we will kind of move on to uh, some of the more uh, what I would consider not as 
flash well they're flashy but not as flashy uh projects okay uh, more like down to earth of what is hitting the rubber in the road with a lot of our corporate clients um but first i want to give a shout out to melissa malloway for uh showing us a frame um, and um, the reason why is we have had a demand from customers uh, for 360 interactive uh, learning experiences. Uh, so what you're looking at is about three to four months ago, we um, took it upon ourselves to you know, purchase the 3D cameras and actually develop out interactive uh, learning experiences. And we have two clients right now that we're actually doing full builds for, but I'm not allowed to show them. Um, but what they are is uh, just what you're seeing here which is the actual virtual tour of our office. Um, so this is um, our brick and mortar office um, here at Designing Digitally. Um, and uh, what you're able to do is actually go from room to room, office to office. Um, so um, here's- Can you say Abby. hi to the people? No, you can't say hi since it's, uh, it's 4K um, 360 pictures, but you can kind of see um, our location and our team. Um, so here's my, uh, the sales guys hanging out in their office. Um, and then um, you can see me. Now here's what you should know. I work in a closet. This is where I am right now. Um, and the reason why is I have no windows. So sadly, I've had to make my own. So I bought this big wallpaper thing. Um, there's a window over here. Um, so basically, I am in a closet. I have no idea what the weather's like, so don't ask me. Um, and <laughs> that, that window, it looks real. I tell you, it looks like you've hey, got man. a really beautiful glass view of the world outside. It keeps me from going insane, that's for sure. <laughs> um, so a couple other things. We are a democracy company. We'll talk about this later, but uh, we provide all free snacks uh, so the team can request anything. Um, and we purchase it for them. Um, and then this is Sydney. Um, and then we're also a dog friendly office. So if I take you into the conference room here in a second, I don't know why my computer is taking so long. There we go. Um, but uh, there is uh, dogs that come to the office every single day. So here's Louie. Um, this is our conference room. Um, and there's Twiggy. We have a Great Dane that comes in the office. We have a Pit that comes in the office, and we have a miniature poodle. Um, we also, uh, each week, we do um, questions to the team, um, and every Monday there's a new question. So this is what do we need to focus on as a team, and it tells it, and everybody can just walk by and write something down, and then we collect these and go back every quarter and look to see what we need to do. Um, and then there's Mario all over. Um, here's the project manager's office. Um, there's Nick, there's Elizabeth, and then John wasn't sitting at his desk. Poor John doesn't even get the pictures. We're, we have Nerf guns everywhere. But the coolest thing is here's the studio. Um, so this is uh, the talented team. Yeah. Jay, Mike, Brent, Greg, Sammy, Carly, uh, Crystal, Brianna, um, uh, Sydney. And then we have a 40-foot mural of Pac-Man all over the wall that was uh, painted by Mike's wife when we first moved into this building. And then clear over here is a humongous Great Dane named Twiggy. And she uh, lays there almost every day. <laughs> That's great. So, I missed that. When I, went, when I went through and did that tour on the video when I was checking it out, I missed the Great Dane. You never see her. And then this is my right-hand girl. My wife works here, and I think <laughs> that's funny. But uh, my wife is Abby, and she's our director of business affairs. But this is uh, Brittany. This is who I work with every day. Uh, she's our marketing uh, manager. And, um, yeah, that's our, that's our office. But I have to give a shout-out to um, – Melissa, because she was like, hey, everybody should check out A-Frame. So we uh, decided to run with it and try it out. So if you guys get a chance, check out A-Frame. Yeah, and you can buy, like, um, you know, these pictures that you see here were uh, purchased uh, over a $150 Samsung 360 camera. So it's not like you have to invest thousands upon thousands of dollars in a camera to get a really nice look. And, and A-Frame is open source, right? Yep, completely open source and free. Yep. So are there, are there other options though? I mean, did, were you looking at something else before you discovered A-Frame? We did see, okay, so I will just tell you guys some of the limitations that we found. You cannot, the, with the videos um, compared to the stills, so these are stills, so these are actually uh, exp, uh, looked at as like images, panoramic mm -hmm. uh, images. The 360 videos are much more complicated. You need a 360 video player. The A-Frame 360 video player does not work in uh, on the iPhone, on Chrome, or Safari. So you mm. have to have the player from like YouTube and then embed it into your storyline build if you build it in storyline to even get it to play uh, on a on a phone. 
And the okay. reason why is we all know how this is, build it once and we all want it on every device and we complain yeah. that it doesn't. Um, so that's one of the things that you guys need to keep in mind if you guys use A-Frame. Cool, yeah, good to know. So, so cool. I wonder, has anybody else in the chat uh, used A-Frame? Just curious. Like you said, I know Mel has messed around with it. I was just wondering if anybody else had uh, had done it. But yeah, I mean, and and um, uh, what camera was that that you had? Like, so uh, it was the Samsung, uh, the 4K. I forget what it's called. The 360. So just the, the 360 video, right? Yeah. Um, and it, would it would it take images from any camera? So like, um, there's that Rico 360. That the little stick yep. thing. Would would that yep. work? Yep. You can get the Rico stick, yep. And it all works with uh, the A-Frame system. So A-Frame is basically an open source system. Um, and again, Melissa is way smarter than me into this, but you can actually do a lot with those 360 videos using A-Frame. So this is A-Frame, and it's a, um, a repository of code um, that you can use to you know, work on uh, developing out your system with 360 videos or images. Cool. So there it is. So and you can just use the code and start messing with it. Yeah, I was just gonna say. So how hard was it to to put it together? Like, like is this the type of thing that someone's really gonna have to geek out on, or with A-Frame does it really make it a little bit easier? JavaScript and uh, HTML, and you're you're good to go, man. So again, it all comes circling back to what was happening before Flash came in. Uh, basically, yeah. become web developers, kind of like interactive media web developers. Yep. So let me yeah. uh, show you guys a couple uh, rubber hit the road kind of things so that you guys can yeah, see it. Yeah, let's do it. Um, anybody that wants to check this out, this is actually online. It's called learningonthego.net. And this is um, for Bridgestone. Um, and this gets over 15,000 uh, 15, hits a month. Um, and what this is is external training for somebody that works at Sears that may be selling Bridgestone tires. And what it is is it's a fully responsive. And what I mean by responsive, I mean completely responsive. This wasn't built in my Captivator storyline, um, but but uh, this is focused around being for the mobile phone. And what it is is actually a resource guide and a reference guide for them to choose uh, particular tires uh, depending on what the customer is looking for. And then on top of that, it has selling scenarios knowledge checks and selling scenarios for you to actually understand um, the situation of how to sell these particular tires. And, you know, let's say they're looking for retread tires. Um, they can go in and start some of these selling scenarios that they've seen in the past and actually practice this and see how well they do. Um, this was built completely with HTML5 um, and PHP and um, JavaScript um, and MySQL databases, but this is public consumption. It's free from Bridgestone, um, and it's been one of the most successful uh, external sales tools, um, sales training tools for Bridgestone. So, wow. um, and again, so this is a little more rubber hits the road from us. And as you can see, it's fully responsive, so it's not adaptive. Um, so you can check it out on your mobile phone, and it works great. Another yeah. one. Do you That's do you cool. do any sort of tracking for that since it's public and all? Do yeah. you do you care about the tracking and all that? Um, we do. Like uh, we have, um, what did we use? No JS um, for Josh. Um, what hmm. uh, we ended up doing is developing out. Um, we did not use um, XAPI because we don't really need to. When it's a website, we can actually track that stuff with like analytical data, and we can set goals. Like we want one user to go to this, one user to go to this, and we want to see how many users went to that. So we can actually set all that up using the PHP and the MySQL database, um, so that we don't have to do the the XAPI LRS to an LMS because this is an external tool. So all we had to do is build an admin backend portal and then yeah, work with them to figure out what like analytics. Google analytics you know. or something for even right have that on top of that but we we want to know a little bit more not just oh, okay, those, yeah, okay. Wanna... you're drilling more deeply that's why you got your own in there gotcha. yeah so they get um the customer bridgestone gets every month the google analytics automatically we set that up that's pretty easy to do that yeah. takes like an hour um and then we add the additional analytics so they can go in as an administrator and see additional stuff that we couldn't see from analytical uh, gotcha. Um, another one, uh, we were asked to do like um, uh, fully responsive uh, interactive timelines. Um, so what you're looking at is one that we did for Athena Health. Um, and it's all uh, dynamic um, so that it works. And the way that it works is you're looking at the demo version. 
Um, I can't show you the full version. Um, but what ends up happening is this is actually an interactive learning module where we're tracking what they've done. Not just that they've clicked, but they've actually watched this video. Um, they do the interactive knowledge check. Um, we're utilizing XAPI for that. And then putting that into an LRS and then showing that stuff through a portal. Um, so it's just one where we're doing a lot more back end than front end on these efforts and then making explainer videos, things like that. Um, another cool. one that I think is pretty cool, um, the U.S. Department of Transportation Maritime Administration, uh, we developed out this custom uh, learning, uh, we call them learning tracking systems because with a learning management system or CMS, they can add more courses. Um, this one is set up for um, any a large ship that's going to be docking in the United States must log on online, take these courses to be qualified to dock their ship on United States docks. Um, and this started this year. Um, so it started in January. And it's basically uh, level two traditional e-learning modules, um, but uh, every single um, ship captain um, and owners of those ships must take this training through the United States um, and through this website. So we manage, um, we've developed everything for the Marad um, Department of Transportation and we maintain it for them. So you, may, you mentioned you, you, may, you, um, you used the term uh, level two learning modules. Can you, can you give us a little bit more extent on that or, or skip it altogether? Uh, what? No, 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 I don't mind. Um, we, have, we, have six, we have levels of production here. And those level of production, uh, a level two for us is a traditional e-learning module. Okay. So presentation style, um, closed captioning, um, uh, you know, interactive knowledge checks, drag and drop multiple choices, things like that. Um, what you would see in traditional e-learning development is our gotcha. level two. And so some um, of the more advanced stuff then is what you would term level five, level six, level seven, however many levels you have. That's that's just how you refer to the different products that you have available to customers, right? That's exactly it. Yeah. Okay. Exactly how we approach the learning too. Yeah. So okay. cool. not to give it all away, but it's aligned on Bloom's Taxonomy too for our approach and things like that. Yeah. Um, now, here's one that's been a huge success. If you guys get a chance, this is ver drivevermont.vermont.gov. Um, this is dated. Um, and this is probably 2010. Um, but here's the reason why I want to show you guys this. We took um, the permit packets that you had when you were uh, going to get your driver's license, or if you have kids that are about to get their driver's license, they get the newspaper packet to learn about how to drive um, in that state. And what Welcome they found to is drive Vermont. Uh, what they found is nobody is actually reading those. Um, so what we ended up doing is converting it into an interactive learning experience um, for these kids to, to utilize. And then we got the um, the state of Vermont to actually add a question to the quiz, to the permit exam, asking if they took this. And then over the span of five years, we were able to see that we, by building this and implementing it for the state of Vermont, increased the passing rate throughout the entire state of Vermont by 35%. And we have that as a press release from the Department of Transportation, or from the DMV. Wow, that's great. You know what? Arizona could use that. Uh, you should send it to some of our DMV folks. <laughs> it's, uh, I can tell you the, 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 the interesting thing about this is, is it has to be custom built for each, um, oh. each state. And the reason why is uh, like we're doing one and we're finishing it up right now for the state of Delaware. And it's so different, the regulations, even though their states are right beside each other, that mm. While it would be nice to blanket one for everybody, it's nearly impossible. Um, wow. Just because. All right. Well, custom work. That's all right with our tax dollars. I'm sure they can scrounge up some money to to do it for each one of the states for you. Hey, listen, I, let's, oh. before you before you jump into your next demo, let me just ask the question in the in the Q and A here real quick. And Craig is chomping at the bit to get your answer on this. So, uh, do you think that VR AR is the future of training as a whole? a good choice to use sometimes or just going to fade away? Oh, that's a good question. Um, here's what I think is going to happen. We are now seeing the technology. Okay, so right now the Rift and the Vive that are out right now are wired to a computer that has a very heavy VR um, uh, video card. And those things cost a fortune. And that's the issue with VR if you're going to do spatial VR. You're not going to do... 360 camera video VR, there are two different things. So that 360 tour that I showed you, that's what happens when you take your cell phone and you slap it in one of those Google Cardboards or one of those things your kid has and walks around. That is considered like video, um, immersive video to me. That's not real yeah. VR. 
Real VR is the HTC Vive, the Oculus Rift, where you see three dimension and I go like this and I about hit something or I feel like I can grab something. I don't have that ability on my flat um, computer screen. So 360 video is going to continue to become more and more popular. Augmented reality is gonna become more and more popular because we're all about data, but the problem is as human beings, we can't sparse that data enough ourselves. So why not use augmented reality to let that data sparse it for us? Virtual reality will be very popular as soon as the price comes down and the technology becomes more mobile. What I think is going to happen, if you were gonna look out long term, let's say 20 years, I think our cell phones will be on our wrists and I think we'll all be wearing uh, hologram glasses and look like Spock. Or uh, um, I'm not Spock. Who am I talking about? Um, Reading Rainbow guy. Come oh, on. Oh yeah. Um, Reading Rainbow. That's how I know. Him. But it's not Data Jordy. Yeah. yeah. I know him by Reading Rainbow, y'all. Not. not <laughs> Reading Rainbow. That's my dude. All right. Um, so I personally think what's going to end up happening is we're going to. Yeah, it's Lavar. Thanks, Louise. Um, I personally think we're going to end up with kind of like holographic augmented reality glasses um, that we kind of see as a standard um, yeah. rather than just, oh, look at this guy with his goofy looking glasses on. And then I think um, right now, I, I state this in all my presentations, I left my cell phone at home. Um, and I'm not really that concerned about it because like we're addicted to those things and they're so cumbersome. I got to put that thing in my pocket. I got to put that thing in a, like it's not easy to hand, uh, handle. So I think our cell phones will be attached to our wrists so we can be hands free with our phones. And then when you can get that same data, right? When, when, you, when we're starting to wear sunglasses that are so unobtrusive and light, but you can get that alternate reality or augmented reality of everything, all that data that we're now staring at a screen for, once that data starts getting presented right in front of us, then it becomes a lot easier and that becomes much more of a reality, which I know people are working on. Yeah, I think... Uh... I think we're going to see that. And I think within the next, as you guys know, technology doubles every two years. So my guess is in the next two years, you'll see it. I see it with like um, the mm -hmm. Oculus is coming out with a new uh, smaller handheld type of version. But the problem still is even if they use Bluetooth or something to travel that technology so you're more free about moving, our computers, the computer and the, the, the technology and the VR um, K, uh, things need to be more powerful and smaller yeah. for us to be able to do that. Until they can get the VR video cards the size of a phone, we're still going to have a lot of that problem. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, and Molly, you're right. Contacts, right? The, all of the technology to put in a contact lens, that's going to be pretty cool. <laughs> I have, uh, Deborah, I have two cell phones. One is my work, one is my personal, and at all times, I, they're both usually in my hands. But on my way here today, I forgot to bring them both, and I actually feel kind of good. <laughs> Liberation. Liberated. Except um, your wife, I'm sure, is wondering, how come I can't get a hold of Andrew? Oh, well, she knows. She she knows Google Hangouts is where to find me. <laughs> so, I just gave away my secret. Everybody's going to be like, oh, he's on Google Hangouts. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get him there. All That's right, yeah, you, sorry for that little tangent. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that real quick. So um, so what's this next one here? Okay, so this one um, that you guys are looking at that I'm kind of clicking through, this is for Longhorn Darden, which is the owners of um, Olive Garden, of um, uh, uh, Red Lobster, of Longhorn. Um, a lot of their learning was traditional, you know, presentation style learning. And so they came to us and said, we would like to be able to do uh, some learning games. And we've heard you guys have done an excellent job of that. Um, could you help us out? And take into consideration that when we build this stuff, we look at the aptitude of the actual learner to find out, have they even played games? Why would we make a VR game for somebody that's working in a restaurant if they've never had any experience with that and there's no real purpose? Um, you know, with electrical line workers, it's a little bit different. There, there's a high risk factor there if they screw up. If you screw up something while working at the restaurant, like you forget to talk to the, the restaurant or the disgruntled employee the wrong way, no one is going to be electrified. Um, so it's just, it's a little bit different. So what we do is we look at the aptitude. Um, we also look at the technology restrictions. And what you're looking at here is actually a game. And this one's going to be at Demo Fest next week. It's so freaking cool. This is a completely randomized scenario-based game. Um, 
that will actually allow you to do what's called throughput, which is you being the manager of this entire restaurant, and your job is to get these customers in there happy, fed, and out the door to see what type of profit you can make each and every night. So you're actually practicing being a manager of one of these stores, or of one of these Longhorn restaurants, and actually seeing the feedback. Now, what you should know is, the cool part is, is we've used AIML uh, dynamic chat bots for these systems, so they're not just canned responses. Um, there's multiple different outcomes that happen, so there's about four to five different outcomes in these this game-based experience. There's different outcomes um, for uh, each one of the interviews that you do. There's randomized scenarios, so every single time you take this, it's completely different. Um, so if I refresh, it's never the same scenario or story or situation. And so what I'm doing is literally giving them the, this tool um, that they can continue to use over and over. It's not a one-time learning experience and then they're done. So nice. And what do, what do you call this? This kind of view has a name for it and I always forget it. It's like... I, we call it like top-down or godlike view. Yeah, yeah. But there's like a, for a technical term, like visually graphic, it's like... It's like asymmetric or something yeah, like that something i don't know isometric, isometric. Yeah. thank you yeah, josh. Thanks, josh. Yeah. josh knows all the answers I yeah, don't he know does why. he has all of it but i i can remember how popular those kinds of games were that isometric view and and uh uh is like a side scroller and the adventure games and stuff like that it's very cool here's another one um uh and i'll show you guys this one really cool uh quick um, this one is actually, and this will blow you guys' mind. First off, you're probably wondering, why is it like this in a square? Well, this one was for the federal government. Um, for all of you that wanna know, we were commissioned by NASA to build training over how to be a project manager at NASA because NASA um, promotes engineers to project managers, which are terrible project managers. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so one of the things that we ended up doing is um, building out this immersive uh, training. It's about two and a half hours of uh, training um, over how to be, um, um, how to actually uh, be an effective project manager at uh, NASA and what to do and what the process is. And then you actually virtually go through each one of these lessons um, and uh, do that actual project management process. So, and you actually interact with people and you right here we're going to go under clear and understandable goals verification and validation um, interacting with employee or your staff uh, things like that so um, i'm just clicking through because i don't want to give any content material away um, but this is just another uh, kind of example of some of the learning that we were doing um, every single time a customer comes to us it's it's a different um a different situation and so uh, we we've done training over so many different things um, here's another one. External. Welcome to this online training on the ping fitting process. Anybody a golfer here? Um, ping um, actually hired us. And you know what? This one I want to say, um, um, this one actually was is one of the most successful external training tools. What happened to my video? Oh, there we go. Uh, external training tools for ping. What this is a simulated experience. If you worked at Top Golf or you worked at um, yeah. Uh, Cabela's and somebody came in and said I want to buy golf cl uh, clubs the people that are fitting you for the clubs don't work for ping and so mm -hmm. they were getting fitted wrong and they weren't enjoying the clubs and they weren't purchasing clubs again so what we ended up doing is building this randomized scenario base where you get a different customer each and every time and your job is to interview them through this interview process and find out their height their weight their swing their accuracy you know how they play and then they can virtually see how they're going to end up doing with that particular club and that's done with mathematical calculations it's not done as pre-ranged images and the reason why is we had to work with the uh, subject matter experts at ping to make sure that we get this perfect and then what happens is ping has actually released that out and it's been the most successful external sales tool they've ever had or external uh product knowledge tool they've ever had um so that is, that is so cool yeah it's uh one of those that uh, we've had we had a lot of fun doing and they were great and then clark quinn um, does everybody know Clark? Um, Clark for Ping's project was the person that did um, some of the upfront uh, analysis over what they needed. 
So it was really nice because Clark is an industry friend of mine. If you guys don't know Clark, the guy is as smart as hell. He, 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 he blog posts are fantastic. Um, but what ended up happening is it was fantastic because when the client came to us, they had already had um, some of the, the pain points and problems already analyzed by Clark. So it actually mm -hmm. made life a lot easier. Um, so if you guys do need a strategic um, consulting, he is somebody that you guys can look at um, because he actually gave us the ability to take a step further than us starting from the complete beginning, which yeah. was which was um, awesome. refreshing. Hey, Andrew, we're at the top of the hour, man, and uh, I'm gonna oh. I'm gonna have to end our end our time together. But do you want to show us oh, just yeah. one more real quick? Well, I'll show you this one. But next time that we get on the line. Um, for anybody that wants to talk like next month, um, what I do want to let you guys know is I think we should talk a little bit about knowledge sharing um, and internal knowledge sharing for our, uh, for our own companies. So for instance, Andrew, as an internal uh, effort, has been on a crusade to build a YouTube university so that uh, knowledge of internal processes and practices um, are not um, being uh, forgotten when somebody leaves our organization. So something we could talk about uh, next time. And then last nice, but not least, yeah. this is this is a award-winning game. It won um, a Serious Play Award last year. This is uh, called Mercer's uh, City 3000. It's a sales training game for Mercer. They're a 3,000 uh, three billion dollar company um, over how to do their sales pra uh, sales process. And what it is is a uh, a game that went in Cornerstone. Um, we're tracking the mastery score, which is uh, posted to Cornerstone. Um, but basically, it unlocks cities as you practice that uh, sales process and do it correctly. And then at the end um, of each uh, uh, building or each company that you solve uh, the solution for, you actually get to hear the case study from uh, either the CEO or the executive. So um, cool yeah. stuff, man. And I will oh, be at Learning cool Solutions stuff. next week. Yeah, so how, how can people get a, get in touch with you? I mean, I think it's pretty easy, but any special ways? Um, email. I live and die by email. Um, and I will put it in the chat, um, but I also yep. can put it right here. Um, Andrew.Hughes at BD Inc. Mail or designingdigitally.com. It doesn't matter. They all go to the same place. Um, but you guys can shoot me an email and uh, we can nerd it up. I will be at Learning Solutions next week. So if anybody's there and wants to uh, stop by our booth or come hang out or come chat, let me know. Brent, I better see you there, my man. Yeah, you will see me there. I'm gonna be hanging out in the Domino booth, but I think we're close by you. So, you know, we'll uh, we'll, we'll be able to, to spend some time together for sure. And uh, the XAPI booth, I think is gonna be there as well. So. Yeah. That's going to be fun and uh, yeah, lots of great stuff. So I'm looking forward to seeing your, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing your project live in the demo fest. Yeah, man. Um, that, yeah, like I said, the one that'll be there is Longhorn. So if Longhorn. you guys want to check it out and then we also have one more, it's called Checkers uh, drive Through Challenge. Um, so Sean, one of our team members will be actually showing that one in the business processes. Um, oh, awesome. So we have both of them in demo fest. So um, thanks everybody. Thanks for your time. Sorry I ran over. Yeah, no, that's all right, man. I love it. Yeah, thanks everybody for hanging out today. This was a fantastic talk. I'm gonna go ahead and close out your uh, your video, Andrew, and uh, I'll say a few closing words. But you can jump into the chat, drop in whatever links you want, and all that good stuff. And we will. Uh, well, I'll see you in Orlando next week, but then uh, we'll see you back here in another month or so. Yeah, sounds good. All right, man. Take care. If I can hit the right button. All right, everybody. Thanks again, Andrew, for hanging out with us. What a fantastic uh, showing of fantastic work. I mean, unbelievable stuff. I think I think heads were exploding, Andrew. You always do such a great job of showing the cool work that you guys do. And that's the kind of stuff that our industry needs to start getting really excited about, right? Not the pontificating of whether or not trends are going to be hot or aren't going to be hot or what's going on, but the real stuff that can be done right now. And that's what I love to see and why I love having you on showing this stuff. So I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day in, uh, in doing all this great work and, uh, and showing it to the TLDC community. Hey, everybody, um, we've got a great show tomorrow, so don't forget, Leela Fever is going to be on from Common Craft. So uh, get fired up for that. He is so much fun and um, is, is going to give us some great tips on video 
of course, Sam Rogers will be hosting, and uh, these the the wonderful and amazing Snap Synapse will uh, will be chatting with him, and uh, it will be a wonderful, wonderful time. So, everybody have a great day. Join us over in TLD chat for continued conversations, and we will see you all tomorrow. Everybody, go out there and do some good training. Adios. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.